Welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Who's Next. Today we're going to travel out to the Midwest to Arvada, Colorado, where we find 14-year-old quarter midget racer Cassidy Hines. Cassidy, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, man. So what made you decide that you wanted to be a race car driver? Um, so when I was really little, my parents and I used to go to Bandemir all the time. And when I turned six, I kept asking my parents for a dragster. And they said no, because my dad preferred oval track more. So he took me out to our annual pumpkin race that we do in Pueblo. And he showed me those. And ever since then, I fell in love with it. So. All right. So now I understand, though, that you started off your racing career even before you went into the quarter midgets. Now, yeah. you started off racing RC cars. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. I started racing RC cars when I was three years old with my dad and my uncle Jesse. Um, I raced those till I was 10. Um, by the time I quit, I was beating all the guys older than my dad. So it was, it was pretty fun to do. See, now that's a smart strategy because you start beating your dad and all these other guys in the RC cars. They're going to be like, how are we going to get rid of this girl? And so you move her to yeah. quarter midgets. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like a pretty good plan to me. You should like patent that process. If you've got any other girls out there that are wanting to be racers, they'll be like, hey, if, you're, if you know a bunch of guys that are racing RC cars, just get better than they are. And eventually they'll find some place for you to go because those guys can't fit in quarter midgets. So I think that was a great plan. Yeah. All right. So you started racing quarter midgets then, I'm going to gather, at the age of 10 years old, right? Yeah, I started racing when I was 10, um, and ever since then, I've loved it. So what quarter midget association or club do you call home? Uh, my home track is RMQMA, Rocky Mountain Quarter Midget Association. It's down in Decono, Colorado. All right. So I know that that's got to be one of your favorite tracks, but what is your, what is your favorite track to actually race at? Um, I have a few favorite tracks. My first favorite track is the Budweiser Event Center that we hold um, for the Fall Nationals. Um, and my second is RMQMA and PPQ, or uh, no, SCQMA down in Pueblo, Colorado. Down in Pueblo. So do you race both on pavement and dirt? Um, I mainly do asphalt. I've done dirt once down at Az Aztec Speedway in Aztec, New Mexico, but ever since then I've just done asphalt. Just wasn't a fan of the dirt or? Um, we don't really have any dirt tracks near us, so we never really go out to any. Okay, so with all of our drivers, we do this little game. It's called Get to Know Cassidy in 60 Seconds. Are you ready to play? Okay. All yeah. right, here we go. What's your favorite food? Chicken carbonara. Chicken carbonara. Favorite video game? Um, I don't play video games, so I don't really have a favorite. Awesome. I think that's great. Do you do any simulator stuff? Um, no, not really. Okay. I want, want to. Yeah, you might want to check that out. What's your favorite TV show? Um, Chicago Med and Chicago Fire. Oh my gosh, you could come live at our house. That's like number one on our list. Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, great shows. What's your favorite color? Yep, uh, blue. Favorite subject in school? Science. Science, all right. Favorite racing series? Um, I like the Monster Energy series, the Xfinity series, and then our Front Range series that we hold for our quarter missions. All right, so who's your favorite race car driver besides yourself? <laughs> I like Earnhardt Jr. and Truex Jr. All right. Well, one of them's retired now, so you're going to have to replace Earnhardt Jr. with somebody. So you got um, to get another driver in there. I don't really have another, another favorite. Truex because, he's, a... Truex because he's based in Colorado, I'm assuming? No, I just like the, him he's, and his racing. He's a, he's a good choice. Do you have any pets? 
Yeah, I have two dogs and two bunnies. Two dogs and two bunnies. Do the dogs go to the races with you? Yeah. All right. What's their they name? They don't travel to the Grands, but they travel with us to home tracks. To the home tracks. Okay. So let's take a quick look at your uh, quarter midget career. And if you would, just share some of the highlights with us, um, some, of the, some of the biggest moments in your, in your career. Um, so I've gotten track records in Mod World Formula and Unrestricted Animal. And I've gotten track championships in um, Light World Formula, Mod, and I'm pretty sure I've gotten those a few times. Um, I've gotten second place at the Eastern and Western Grands last year in Mod, and I got track record at the Western Grands last year in Mod. And I've gotten, uh, yesterday I got track record, or um, quick time in 160 and Light World Formula. So out of all the different classes, which one is your favorite? Uh, my favorite would have to be Light World Formula and Mod World Formula. Just because they're faster? Yeah. Okay, all right. So I figured that much. So I want you to think back a little bit and just share with us what it was like to win your first race. Um, it was an adrenaline rush. I was very excited and I was very happy. And I was tired after that race because it was very nerve-wracking. I was very shaky after that. Yeah. So there's nothing more, you talked about that adrenaline rush, than grabbing that checkered flag and getting able to make that victory lap with that checkered flag. And you're the only one on the track. So think about that first one. Now, I'm hoping this didn't happen to you, but the last three drivers that I've interviewed on, on Who's Next all crashed during their first victory lap. That didn't happen to you, did it? No. Okay, good. So we've had one that said <laughs> I tried to do a donut and hit the wall. I had another one the other day that said the checker flag went over my visor. I couldn't see anything and I hit the wall. So, all right, boys, take a lesson from this girl. Don't crash on your victory laps. So I know that um, you've had a lot of memorable races, but what would you say is your most memorable race? Uh, my most memorable race, I have two. My first one is my first win in Light World Formula at SCQMA because I'm running with the best down there. Um, and my second most memorable is my animal win at PPIR last year. Okay. So I know that there's a lot of sacrifices that, um, especially people that are your age, have to make if they want to pursue a racing career. So share with us a little bit of what some of those sacrifices have been for you. Um, some of those sacrifices have been that I can't take normal summer vacations. Like we can't go to Pennsylvania and visit family all the time. We, you know, we can't take the normal summer vacations that people would normally take. We, I miss a lot of school because of racing. Um, I don't get to see my friends a whole lot during the summer because I'm racing whenever they want to come over. And there, that's mainly the most, the biggest sacrifices that I've made. Okay, so I've got two other questions for you. Number one, do you think the racers that you race against treat you differently because you're a girl? No, they don't treat me differently because I'm a girl. I mean, they... Some of them get angry if I beat them, but it's not that they treat me different. They were all a big family and no one treats anybody different for anything. Yeah, I hear that from all, all of the racers I talk to that says that most of my best friends are people that I actually race against. Yeah. So I know right before we came on, I was talking to you. You had a pretty successful weekend this last weekend. Uh, share with us yeah. a little bit about that weekend because, I mean, you basically won out and won everything. Um, so for this previous weekend, I got track, um, quick time in heavy 160, and then I won my unrestricted animal race and I won my light world formula race. So now I, and I, and I think you told me that you got spun out by somebody, right? Yeah. 
Um, I got shoved into the wall in Unrestricted Animal and went to the back, and I raced all the way up to first. And so. Again. so I had yeah. asked you earlier, too, did the person who spun you out got sent to the back, and, and you said no. So right. we talked about would that young boy would be kind of like looking over his shoulder for the rest of the race going, I know she's coming. And there has yeah. to be a certain He's amount of, of excitement that when you pass the person who spun you out, almost kind of like thumbs up, see you later. Yeah. He was definitely looking over his shoulder for that race. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you, what does your friends actually think about you being a race car driver? They think it's pretty cool. They all want to come out to the racetrack and support me. It's just really hard to take them out there because, you know, distractions and stuff. It's really hard to stay focused on racing. So I don't take many friends out to the racetrack, but when I do, it's pretty fun. Yeah. And, and it's, and your guys are so busy. I mean, if you're there running in two or three or four different classes, I mean, it's, it's nonstop. I know I went out to, to the big Vegas race and I, I saw, kids that were racing, you know, six, seven, eight times a day, if not yeah. more. So it, it is a it is a point where you need to be focused and uh, you got to keep your concentration. So who are your biggest supporters? My biggest supporters are my mom and my dad, my Mima and Papa, my Papa Andy and Jeannie, um, my Uncle Ray and my cousin Race and Joey and Ruben Barella. So share with us a little bit about what's coming up in 2018. What are, what is your rest of your 2018 plans look like? Um, my 2018 plans are hitting both the Eastern and the Western Grands, um, doing the Front Range Series, going to Pennsylvania and visiting my family there, and just going from there with racing. Yeah, you know they have quarter midget tracks in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So you may have, to, may have to kind of like hook the trailer up and take that on the family vacation with you. So, maybe. Yeah, that's, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Tell your mom and dad. So we could maybe like write the vacation off or something as, you know, track expenses or something like that. So tell me some of the, the tracks that you've raced at. Have you been to Indy for that particular um, race yes. there? And what yeah, was that we've like? Been to um, it was definitely an experience. We didn't like it as much as we would have hoped. Um, so we won't be going back there, but it was definitely an experience. But you got to make a, you got to make a lap on the big track, right? Yeah. Well, that's got to be, I mean, when you're driving down that back straightaway or front straightaway, could you ever imagine yourself doing that at 230 miles an hour? I could imagine myself doing that. Imagine? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So what are your racing goals? I mean, where do you, where do you see yourself? What is, your, what is your goal to move forward? Um, my goals are to be in 600s and Legends and eventually to move up to NASCAR. All right. So in five years, let's say, let's fast forward five years, you're going to be, what, 18 at that point? Yeah, somewhere around there. Okay. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I see myself in college and racing, of course. <laughs> well, I'll tell you somebody good to follow. One of our drivers, Anthony Alfredo, he's doing that. He's running in the NASCAR Can-In Series right now, full-time student in, in, a, in the Charlotte area. So it can be done. So yeah. ultimately, you've got your sights set on getting to the NASCAR Monster Energy Drink Series. Now, it may not be called that by the time you get there, but NASCAR's top level, that's where, you see, that's where you'd like to see yourself. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's a lot of steps in between there. And, and again, you know, you, you said that you're going to go um, micro sprint racing and then into the legend cars. And of course, then you got to eventually you got to get yourself into a late model. And uh, so that's, that's kind of got to be exciting. So what, what does Cassidy do when, when you're not racing? Um, I play with my dogs, I play with my bunnies, I ride my bike, I jump on the trampoline, spend time with friends, go to the movies with my family, I just really do anything. When so I'm basically, not racing. when you're not in a race car, you're just a normal, average teenage girl, right? Yep. All right. So let me ask you this tell us something 
that most people don't know about you? Um, something that most people don't know about me is that I'm really shy at first. I may not come off like it, but I'm shy. <laughs> okay, so you're shy. So as we start to wrap this up, you want to talk about any of your sponsors? Um, yeah, I'd like to thank Stephen Sons Auto Glass in Pueblo, Colorado, um, Frontier Restoration, Purple Lightning Racing, uh, Roofline Supply, Andy's Painting Service, uh, Funicelli Book um, Club in Hutto, Texas, and Tad Pfizer Race Cars and Moz Tech Engines. All right. How about any websites or Facebook, Instagram sites that you want to share with the viewers? Um, so I have a Purple Lightning Racing Facebook page, a Purple Lightning Racing Instagram, and the website is purplelightningracing.com. All right. So what, where did the purple come from? Purple Lightning. Where did, where did that? It was supposed to be Blue Lightning Racing, but it was already taken by the time I could shoot it. All right. Well, well, Cassidy, thank you for being on the show. I wish you all the best of luck as uh, the rest of the 2018 season uh, kind of rolls out. Uh, I want to invite you to come back and maybe later in the year, come back and be an, a guest and kind of give us an update on, on what's happened during 2018. Would you do that for us? Yeah, and I would also like to thank my grandma and grandpa for being big supporters. All right, well, good thing. Well, there you've got it. 14-year-old Cassidy Hines from Arvada, Colorado. Again, one of the up-and-coming quarter midgets, if not already arrived as one of the up and uh, top quarter midget racers in the country. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Make sure to check back here next week as we bring you an additional edition of Who's Next with Race Face TV. And as always, I encourage you to go out to your local track, support local racing in your communities. Go catch a quarter midget race sometime. You'll be happy that you did. We'll see all of you back here next week.